Martha, how are you? Darling. I'm so glad you came home early. You bet. I'm through working late. From now on, I'm coming home where I'm appreciated. Yeah. Wouldn't the guests show up? All except Mrs. Hackathorn. She couldn't come. That's good. But you'll have to take her place. We're playing bridge, you know. Bridge, my hat. <laughs> Oh, I don't mind the game, but the players. Those old women. I think they're fun. You always seem to get such a lot of laughs out of their broadcasting gossip. I've never seen you laugh so much last week as when... That's so. Ah, yes, yeah, sure. There are a lot of laughs, I know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> John, sit down here with Miss Duckwilder and Miss Thomas. We're highly honored, my sure. dear. You dealing, Mrs. Thomas? Yes. Well. Hello, John. Hello, Dorothy. Mr. Wyatt, are you by chance one of the Wyatt people? That's correct. There aren't any left in Boston. They're all out here in Los Angeles. Oh, uh, and Pomona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I pass. Two hearts. Two? Pass. I pass. Did everyone pass? <laughs> then I have it for two hearts. Half to Trump, John. Oh, yes, that's right. Half. You don't play. You are the dummy. I'm the what? You are the dummy. Oh, yes, that's right. Sure. I'm the dummy. <laughs> there yeah, we are. very nice. Well, if you'll we pardon me, it. I'll uh, step right out and have a smoke. Very well. All right. Oh, pardon me. Uh, I'm going outside to smoke. I'm the dummy. <laughs> Things sure happen fast in California. Back home it takes months and months. Sure, come on up. How's everything going over here? Oh, just fine. John and I won our bid. Good. John is a very charming man. You should be very proud of him. In my opinion, he's one in a million. And as I was saying just before you sat down, I'll bet he never looks at another woman. <laughs> I'd hate to think he was so innocent. <laughs> you know, I hadn't noticed you were so fascinating before. <clears throat> of course, maybe it's the new gown. Maybe. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have to disturb John's smoke. Oh, never mind, Mr. McWiler. Go ahead and deal. I'll call him. Very well. Perhaps it's for the best. You must come up and we'll make an evening of it. Ah, yes. Of course, I'd, I'd love to. And you make it tomorrow afternoon? I have the coziest little apartment. Nobody to disturb us. Eighty cents, sir. Just keep it all. Thank you, sir.
that all, madam? Yes, thank you. Well? Well? Hello. Hello. Is Miss Pierce in? No, she's not in. Are you sure? I saw her with my own eyes, and she said she wouldn't be back for hours and hours. Try her apartment again. I'd like to find out when she'll be back. All right. Hello. A Mrs. Wyatt wants to know when you'll be back. I mean, when Miss Pierce will be back. The lady didn't know when she'd come in. I'll go up and keep the maid company till she gets back. But, but you, but you can't do. Hello, hello. What? She's on her way up here. I better step into this room until she goes. Hello, June, dear. Was that you downstairs, that dumb operator? I thought she said Mrs. Hyatt. And you know that old gossip, I wouldn't talk to her for anything. Of course not. May I take your hat? Oh, uh, no, no thanks. Oh, what a lovely negligee. What are you wearing? Is it this hour? You just getting up? No. I always wear it to loll around in. It's so awfully comfortable. Oh. Gee, I'm glad you dropped in, June. I didn't know what to do with myself. And may I have a cigarette? Yes, I'll get you one. Oh, don't bother. I'll take one of these. Well, I didn't know you used this kind. It's the same thing John smokes. That's odd, isn't it? Oh, I changed my brand recently. On account of my throat. Mm. John has one just like this. And are these his initials? Oh, yes. Yes, those are his. I bought it from him at the party last night. You must return it to him this afternoon. Oh, that's funny. I was sure I had one from it this morning. <laughs> Maybe even he has two left to like. Yes, I never thought of that. I my nose. Not at all. Here's a big mirror right over here. I think I'll go on to the bathroom. I want to wash my hands. June, where are you going? It wouldn't matter to you. Martha! Oh, Martha! Yes, sir, Mr. John. Where's Mrs. Wyatt? Miss June's done gone. You mean she's no. left the house? She was here, but she's left? That's it, Mr. John. She just said goodbye to me. Well, didn't she say anything else? No, she didn't say nothing. That man just loaded her bags in the taxi and out she went. But she must have said something about where she was going. Oh, sir, she just said she was in a hurry and she had better hurry because that's the last train to Reno. Reno? Reno, my hat.
Well, my dear lady, with all these details, I'll be glad to take your case. And it won't take long, Mr. Garrett? Six weeks is all. Six weeks? Well, that's terribly long. It's a shame, Mrs. May. Oh, uh, Wyatt. But, personally, my opinion is that it shouldn't take any longer to get divorced than it does to get married. That would be lovely. And why should it? Why? You don't know? No reason. No reason at all. And you'll do everything as quickly as you can, Mr. Garrett? Oh, of course. Of course, Mrs. Wyatt. Uh, um, there is the question of uh, a retainer. Oh, naturally. I understand. So the entire matter, we will say, uh, five hundred dollars. Uh, so I'd uh, suggest two hundred dollars as a retainer. There you are. And here is your receipt. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wyatt. <laughs> now you're as good as a single woman already. Adrian Garrett never failed. I beg your pardon? Yes? Mrs. Maynard is here. Mrs. Maynard? Oh, there is a lady that you should meet. Ask Mrs. Maynard in, if you please. Yes, sir. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Garrett. I don't know a soul here. Mrs. Maynard will acquaint you with Reno. Oh, yes. You're from Los Angeles. Hmm. A splendid suburban market for Reno. Oh, Mrs. Maynard. Delighted. Mr. Garrett, I hope that I'm not intruding. Not at all, Mrs. Wyatt. Uh, Mrs. Maynard. Sisters under the skin, eh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's awfully nice meeting you, Mrs. Wyatt. Thank you, Mrs. Maynard. Oh, just call me Gwen. It's not my real name, but then you know no one here is called by their real name. Well, let's see. We'll have to get a name for you. Uh, how would you like Margaret? Oh, no. Then, um, Mary. Oh. Peggy. Peggy, that's it. Well, that's thrilling. Peggy. The that's... last name doesn't matter. You know, they have so little value in Reno. It's all quite bewildering to me, yes. I know. We all have to get over the first shock of it. But don't let it last too long. I don't think I quite understand. Well, it's this way, Peggy. You mustn't sit around worrying and brooding, or you'll miss a lot of fun. When you get here, you're starting on a new life. So start quickly. Uh, you forgot to comb your hair. You know, the first time I came to Reno, I was an awfully silly thing. If you can believe it, I was afraid to spend six weeks here. And my clothes, well, my dear, they were just terrible. You'd have just thought I was one of the help. You're right, Gwen. Well, I've turned the corner. The new life can't start too soon. For Peggy. That's the Reno spirit, Peggy. Uh, Mrs. Maynard, would you assure Mrs. Wyatt that I am reliable? Oh, don't Peggy? mind him. Oh, he's always selling an idea. Yes. At that, there are worse lawyers in Reno. There. You see, Mrs. Wyatt, you have come to the right place. <laughs> yes, there are worse ones, but I haven't heard of them. I'm going to have to take a vacation from this place. What for? I'm getting so fat. I hadn't noticed it. It hasn't hurt me a bit. Really? Mm. There's a little drink that got a whole made for you. Oh. And that's in there. Hey, Red, how did you happen to be here in Reno? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Doris. It was like this. It was on a very cold night. My wife ups and runs away with my dancing partner. Now, can you imagine any woman running away from me? <laughs> Not on a cold night. Park the body right here. 
happened to think. It wasn't a cold night. Oh, it was a hot night. Hot night? <laughs> Are you bragging? Uh, oh, you know that uh, ranch of yours must be a wonderful spot. Oh, wonderful. Full of cows. You must come and stop a week with me sometime, bro. Oh, yes, sir. I will. Yes, do that. Do that. <laughs> she plays well. She looks well. <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate her, Roy. You're always so appreciative when there's a beautiful woman. Oh, she's more than that. She's a gorgeous creature. Oh, no. <laughs> You're Peggy, aren't you? Why not? No. Oh, yes, Peggy, of course. You remember? I'm Roy. Thanks. I didn't remember. Oh, you should have. Should I? Mm-hmm. I'm dining all alone tonight. Oh, that's a shame. I'm sorry. Oh, no. If you were sorry, you'd see that I wouldn't be. Alone. Uh-huh. Not Mrs. Wyatt. Mrs. Wyatt. You haven't? Oh, my hat. Hello. Give me 1172. Hello. This is John Wyatt speaking. Have you a client by the name of Mrs. June Wyatt? You have? Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, now, um, oh, I'll, um, I'll be right over. Well, I must say that you had quite an uh, experience, Mr. Wyatt. I imagine I phoned every lawyer's office in Reno. <laughs> well, that's uh, quite a few, to say the least, Mr. Wyatt. <laughs> now about Mrs. Wyatt's case. Now, I want you to understand that I don't want my wife to go through with this divorce. If you can tell me where she's stopping, uh, I'd like to see her. Well, that's a little unethical to give the uh, address of one's client, Mr. Wyatt. Now, uh, um, perhaps you'd like me to endeavor a reconciliation? I would, Mr. Garrett. Well, under that uh, condition, there would be a slight uh, retainer <laughs> fee. <laughs> oh, of course, I expected that. Yes. Uh, let us say, uh, $500 and uh, $200 for the retainer fee. There we are. Ah, yes, thank you. Now we can proceed in a few moments. <laughs> Can't we start now? Can't you phone my wife? I anticipated your desires. <laughs> I phoned her a few minutes before you came in. <laughs> June. Mr. Garrett, what is the meaning of this? Why, uh, uh, my dear Mrs. Wyatt, it is always abundant duty of every counselor to endeavor a reconciliation between his, er, uh, um, client. But, Mr. Garrett, I don't I would like to discuss our case en famille, uh, if I might say so. June, I've been trying for a week to find you. I appreciate your intentions, Mr. Garrett, 
But any discussion will only be a waste of time. It is always well to consider a case from every angle, Mrs. Wyatt. So far, it is not too late. But in a few weeks, under my guidance, it will be. June, can't we talk this matter over? I'm... Oh, anything you want to say, but... You should consider that before now. Oh, I'm not trying to excuse myself or blame anyone else. But I don't like anyone but you. I never have. Please believe that. A man can't love a woman and do what you've done. How can he? There's no answer to that. But I know how I feel. John, it's too late. Thank you, Mr. Garrett, for what you've tried to do. Is there anything else? I, I have an appointment and I'm sure I must be late now. Good day. <coughs> well, we made an excellent start. A most excellent start. Just how do you figure that? <laughs> My dear Mr. Wyatt, <laughs> it is very evident that you do not understand women. When a woman says no, she usually means yes. <laughs> I know. Yes, and it's very evident that you don't understand my wife. When she says yes, she means yes. It's utterly hopeless. It's no use. Say, you seem to lose about as regularly as I win, don't you? Oh, it doesn't make any difference. No difference at all. Say, if it doesn't interfere with anything you've planned, could I place a little bet for you? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, what's that? Are you a magician? No. Not even a veteran fairy. No. Just pay these out. Yes, sir. Say, I'd like you to come and have a drink. Drink? Have you had enough of this business? Yes, sir. I say, oh. yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'd like uh, two tables. Uh, two. Two. No, no, yes. Don't, don't. Yes, one table for two. That's right. Two. All you lucky dog. Now, real for two at the first table. Now, listen, old fellow. I want to win. Oh, the lady wins. Number 20 on the red. Number 20 on the red. Four of one. That's it. Oh, there. There goes again. Lucky bunch of games. Who's like? Ah! Who's like this waiter? Who's like this waiter? Who's like this waiter? You're a friend. Thank you, old pal, old pal. The first friend I've found in this place. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, my name's John. Oh, pleased to know you, John. That's, that's great. Oh, my name is Roy. Glad to find a friend, Roy. Thank you, John. Do you know, I, I haven't a friend in the world. Don't be silly. You have now. I'm your friend. And all my friends are your friends. That's great. You know... That, that's what I like about a friend. Yes. A friend indeed is a friend in need. Yeah, there's no rolling stone. That is great. There you are, young lady. There you are. One more.
I got a watch. Oh, I don't need a watch. We got a town clock. I want the doily. Oh, no, no. I gotta have it, because I like that doily. To you, John. To you, Roy. You know, I don't care what happens. I don't care about anything. Except you, Roy. Oh, don't be so downcast, John. I suppose you're here for the same thing I am. But do you see me sad about getting a divorce? I'm not getting a divorce. My wife is. I can't stop her. Oh, you should be glad. What you need is a little fun. What do you say a little fun tonight? Okay with me, Roy. You're a friend. Did you win for me? I'll do anything you say. Add up, boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Let's go places and do plenty. Sure, come, come on. on. I almost forgot. We have to get a couple of nifty fifties. No, 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 no. Huh? Nifty. Dame, sweet mama. Oh, nifties. Is she a friend of yours? No. But she will be in a moment. Hello. Oh, hello. What are you doing this evening? Oh, just anything. Fine. You are just half the one I'm looking for. Have you another one just like you? No, I'm all alone. In this world? Well, I have a pal. And he's a great scout. How would you like to team up with him this evening? What? That big one, Mindin? But I might take a liking to you. Fine. Well, you sit tight, and I'll be right back. Well, what happened? She's waiting for a big ice man. Number 17 on the black and Tell us, you know, Pazzy, you'll have to talk to this one yourself. They hate talking to a third party. Yes, but I've never quite done anything like this before. What do I say to her? Well, you just go up and say, hello, did you call? Well, that's easy. Well, what if she says no? Oh. Well, you say, well, let's pretend that you did, and you're in distress and need a hero. Well, that's great. Now, let me see that. Now, I go to her, and I say, hello, did you call me? And she says, no, and I say, well, let's pretend you did. Let's pretend you're in distress and need sucker. No. Not a sucker. A hero. Oh, a hero. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go. Did you call me? 
Why, yes. Yes? Yes. What is she saying? She said yes. Well, why didn't you grab her? Grab her? I never thought of that. I'll go back. Good. Here you are, Ray. She's gone. She's gone. We'll have to find some more. Oh, yes, we'll find some more. more. Yes. Yes, we have to uh, find right. somebody else. Hold everything. Can you see what I see? I think they're giving us the business. You don't have to tell me what to say now. Just let me go. Atta boy. Why, hello. hello. Say, what do you say to a drink? Let's go. Go. Come on. <laughs> My hat. I just thought of it. We almost wasted an evening. Boy. Give me a telephone, quick. Two of the swellest girls the country ever turns out. Where? Oh, when you see him, it's going to take 50 years off your life. Yes, but where are they? Here's your phone, sir. Thank you. Oh, very intimate friends of mine. I want two, two, one, one. Say, listen. Everybody in Reno has tried to date him up, but I have him allowed I'm a, I am the head man. Hello. Is that you, sweetie? Guess I don't stand in awe. Oh, it's Roy. What's up? Listen, Peggy. How about tonight? Uh, listen, I'll let two of them. Oh, you little cluster of roses. Now, how about Gwen? I have a pal with me, and I told him all about you, and he's all steamed up for a big night. Say, listen. Say, listen. And these are great scouts. I guess that's sending you in all right, pals, eh? Listen, honey, I'll call for you about 8 o'clock. Goodbye, sweet. Boy, and where do you have a look? A couple of hefties, eh? No, not hefties. Nifties. Oh, nifties, that's right. Listen, Palsy, I'll pick them up and meet you here at the club. Sure. Okay, Roy. Okay, Palsy. My dear, I'll tell you, there's no place like the Orient. Siam, Calcutta, China. Quite safe. See that fellow over there? He looks awfully lonesome. Why don't you offer him something? Yes. Do you mind joining me in the nip? Sure, thanks. talking about. What was I saying? I said. Oh, were you saying something? I think I was, yes. I... Oh, no, he's a regular fellow, this time. 
I hope his friend of yours is he's too inexperienced. Inexperienced? Why, he knows more about women than Freud. He's a regular Don Juan. <laughs> Perhaps he's more interesting than you are, then. Why, you've got... Now, listen, don't... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Africa's always different. Animals in and out your windows, and beavers under your bed, and all that sort of Oh, John, uh, this is Peggy. <laughs> John! June! No, no, this is Peggy. Oh, Peggy! <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I'm delighted to meet any friend of Roy's. John, they seem to know each other. Now listen, now there's something John, I want. John, oh. Peggy is my little friend, and Gwen is yours. Gwen, this is John. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> you know, I think your friend John was about to say he'd met me somewhere before. But that's an old it has story. It gray beard. Well, I'm thirsty. Do you have to ask? Not twice. Waiter. Yes, Mr. Uh, you know my locker. My favorite. Four. Right away. Yes, sir. Well, it won't be long now. <laughs> How long have you been here? Oh, just a week. Good. Then we'll have five weeks to play. Yes. Now, do tell me what your wife looked like. But don't tell me that she didn't understand you. Uh, well, it, uh, it, it wasn't exactly like that. I'll wager that you did the walking out. Well, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't explain. I really think... I'm not going to stand it any longer. Please don't make the situation any more ridiculous than it is. Do you have to keep on playing up to him all the evening? Doing it on purpose. He's doing it because I like it. And I see you still prefer blonde. Blonde's my hands. I don't know. This party doesn't seem to have mm, or anything. You know, it's dying. Oh, I've got a lot of mm. You have mm. Well, let's drink. Don't care. Come on, Jerry. Yeah, they can't have it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, Mr. Carlton is over there. Will you tell him I want to speak with him, please? Who shall I say he's waiting? Just tell him his wife. Pardon me, Mr. Carpenter. Excuse me. Better publicity. Your wife wants to see you. Wouldn't she just ask? Oh, dear. Exactly what you can expect of me, wasn't it? Will you excuse me a moment? My broker. Very important. His broker. <laughs> Go on, tell us some more about it. What happened then? Rita, I told you, if you wanted anything from me, to see my lawyer. Roy, please, you aren't going to go through with that, are you? Now, if you start anything around here, I'm going to have you thrown out. Now, remember that. You can just, you can just ask any one of my husbands if you don't believe me. They'll testify to it. Well, listen, let's liven up this party. What do you say? A little lay, uh, old dame chance out there. Oh, I'd love to. Come on, the night is still young. 
24 black and even wins. Listen, I'll get you some chips. Right, coming up. And now we call for my sin. You're doing rather well with the new guy. Thank you. All right, here you are. What'll I do with you? Well, now you place them on the numbers, even, odd, or red or black. All right. There. There. And there. How's that? Well, that's all right. If you win. Number 34 in the red, Stephen. All right. All right. We lost. Yeah, we lost. All right, I'll get some more chips. All right, here we go. All right, we're off one more. Here we go. What are you looking for, you rat? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to leave. I apologize, Mr. Carlton, but... I'm sorry, Henry, we're going. It's all right, come on. All right, folks, let's go. Get back in your plane, ladies and gentlemen. Everything's all right. Well, listen, he tried to annoy you. I saw it. Well, I encouraged him. Did you see that, too? Now, listen. Oh, John, I want to... John, now, don't fight. I'm going to call a little cab. Will you get a cab, please? Someone had to interfere. I, could... I don't need any interference from you. I can take care of myself. The cab is ready, sir. Thank you. Oh, John, uh, can we drop you and Gwen? No, thanks. I wouldn't think of interfering anymore. Oh, well, all right. We'll be seeing you. Good night, Gwen, dear. Good night, dear. Goodbye, John. Goodbye. Well, shall I call the cab? Oh, I'm sorry. Get me a taxi. You know, Peggy, this has been one of the strangest evenings I've ever experienced. And full of thrills, too. And fascinating. And you being here completes the evening. Oh. Perhaps I shouldn't have come. It's late. Well, we had to have a good night drink. How about a little one? Don't do that. All right. Please. I'm tired. Just a few minutes.
Hello. Hello. Hello, John. Come and get me. I'm at Roy Cross's apartment. Well, why call me? I thought you said you could take care of yourself. Are you about ready? Just about. She's gone. I saw her leave. You saw her? I've warned you, Roy, what I was going to do. Don't be a fool. Rita, put that thing away. Are you sure you took a woman down on the elevator last night? Yes, sir. Would you know her if you saw her again? Yes, sir. I'm sure I would. Say, so, yeah. Ed, here's something that ought to help you. A letter from Lawyer Garrett to Mrs. June Wyatt. Well, that's easy. That story is pretty flimsy. You were the last one to leave that apartment. What reason did you have for killing him? Oh, I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't. You say he started to attack you. Is that why you shot him? I didn't. I didn't. I beg your pardon, Chief. Something else has come up. Take the lady out. What is it? The woman's husband is here. Yes? Bring him in. How many empty glasses were found in the apartment? Just two, Chief. I called at my wife's hotel. They said she was here. Arrested. Yeah. She's accused of the murder of Roy Carton. She was at his apartment last night, and this morning he was found dead. Yes, but she couldn't have done it. I know she couldn't. Facts are evident. During the evening they were partying and... Yes. I was on that party. Oh, yes? Yeah? Sit down. Why didn't you accompany your wife home? Well, you see, my wife is here getting a divorce. You were on a party, and your wife the companion of another man, Roy Carton? That's right. Rather unusual, to say the least. It would suggest that you uh, were an accomplice. 
The motive could have been jealousy. Yes. That's why I came here to tell the truth. It was jealousy. You see, I didn't want my wife to get a divorce. And last night, after I left her and Carlton, she phoned me from his apartment, saying she was in trouble. I went there. My wife had gone. But I found Carlton. I understand. There was an argument and... Yeah. Would you be willing to sign a confession that you killed Roy Carlton? Yes. Providing my wife is freed. Oh. All right. He'll be released immediately. Take his confession. Thank you very much. Uh, send in Mrs. Wyatt. Yes, sir. Well, I guess the newspapers won't have any complaint about our losing time on this crime. It's plenty of quick, Chief. This ought to set you in right. Yeah. You're free to go, Mrs. Wyatt. Oh. Then you learned that... that I didn't do it. Yeah. The guilty party confessed. Tell me, who was it? It was your husband. Could I see him? No, not today. Tomorrow, perhaps, Mrs. Wyatt. but I know you. I'm Rita Carlton. I don't understand. No. You made me do it. You took him away from me. You? Yes, I did it. I did it to keep him from you. I saw you leaving him that night. And now I'm going to give you the same thing. But, Mrs. Carlton, I've done nothing to you. Why do you want to kill me? Hello, hello, Mr. Ryan. Mr. Ryan, go up to Mrs. Watt's room. Something terrible is happening up there. Now I'm going to watch you die, just as I watched him. Well, why don't you plead, like he pleaded, the rat? But it won't do you any good, any more than it did him. You let me go. You let me go. It's her fault. She made me do it. She made me do it. I had to do it to save her. But him, you let me go. I've got to kill her. Come in. Oh, Mr. Garrett. Mrs. White. I cannot understand your determination to leave so suddenly. I'm certain that I can affect a reconciliation with your husband. I'm sorry, Mr. Garrett, but I didn't have a chance to come to your office. If you still want your divorce, I can arrange it either way. <laughs> That's Garrett. <laughs> of course. 
I would like to settle your case permanently. Yes? It seems a shame that you can't make up your mind, Mrs. Warrior. Oh, well, you know women. Yes, I wonder. I wonder. Is it absolutely necessary that you should leave today? Someone arranged for my tickets, and I can't disappoint them. Well, I... Well, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> If you happen to know of any other couple desiring to get fixed, you know. Adrian Garrett never. <laughs> Goodbye. <coughs> Change your mind.